completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, this one is part 27, looking at some jobs still left to do and cladding the intermediate and low pressure cylinder block with mahogany strips. In episode 25 I fitted the nice cast hand wheel to the reversing shaft, but there's still some more to do at this. This end of the reversing shaft is more or less finished with the fitting of the wheel, but the other end needs threading. And according to the drawing, the thread should be 20 threads per inch by 3 16ths of an inch in diameter. I need a die and a tap, because the tap needs to be used to thread the part that fits in the drop arm. According to Google, 20 threads per inch is called a cycle thread, and a company called Tracy Tools sell them, but they're out of stock. The nearest tap and die that I have for 3 16ths of an inch in diameter is 26 threads per inch. Does it matter, I ask myself? I would just have to wind the reversing handle a bit faster. At first I thought about 2BA, but I think that's about 31.5 threads per inch, which is a bit too fine. 3 sixteenths is a good compromise at 24 threads per inch, if I have one. For a while now, I've been dismantling the engine, because I need the cylinder block on the bench in order to clad it in mahogany strip. Just before I started editing this video, I received my first question from a viewer about the previous video when I was cladding the high pressure cylinder. This particular viewer was asking if I could remove the mahogany strip to paint the cylinder block and the answer to that is no definitely not. For two reasons I'm not going to paint the cylinder block only around the edges. And if this mahogany idea doesn't turn out very well then I'll just use the mahogany as heat insulation and clad the engine in a piece of metal. This clip shows four 4BA Allen head bolts, and these are going to be used to secure the high pressure cylinder to the intermediate and low pressure cylinder block. This clip shows me drilling through the holes in the high pressure cylinder block and threading them, so when the Allen bolts are tightened up from the other end, they don't disturb the mahogany strip on the high pressure cylinder. This is the approximate position of the Allen bolts when they're in the block. At each side of the intermediate and low pressure cylinder block, I'm going to have to make a removable hatch. And the size of this hatch depends on the length of the Allen key. A standard Allen key is too long, so I shortened it using my one inch belt sander. This is much shorter, but I think I need it even shorter than this. Who knows, at some future time the engine just may need dismantling. Once the high pressure cylinder is firmly bolted to the intermediate and low pressure cylinder block, I do not want to bury the bolts and I need them to be accessible. This clip shows a felt tip pen line, and this is going to be where the last piece of mahogany that's stuck to the block ends. The rest of it will be a removable mahogany hatch. It's very important that this first piece of mahogany strip is parallel to the end of the block. Almost all of the mahogany strips are going to be supported underneath. From my experience, when the cylinders get hot, the mahogany cladding will move around a little bit and I don't want any dropping out. Here I'm dicing with death, I'm using a drum sander to level off the strips. The unmachined casting is quite uneven, and the packing wasn't perfectly level. Using a drum sander is not a good idea unless you've had plenty of experience in using one. Just one slip and the job is ruined. The way it looks at the moment with some scratches on the surface is not important, these will be removed when I do the main sanding operation by hand. This is the interesting bit because the mahogany goes up and around the cylinder, so each piece of mahogany needs chamfering at an angle to fit to the one next to it. I'm using a larger piece of mahogany to make the part that fits around the exhaust flange. How am I arriving at this shape? Well, whilst I'm doing the job, I'm looking at the shape of the casting. This made a lot of mahogany dust, which I collected and tipped into my pot of mahogany dust. This makes a great gap filler in between the mahogany parts. This clip actually shows me doing the job. I apply some cyanoacrylate adhesive to the joint, then I wipe off the cyano and tip in some mahogany dust like this. This effectively fills any gaps. The metal exhaust flange wasn't very well shaped, so here I'm improving that on the drum sander. This metal part, unlike the mahogany, gets very hot, and at the moment I'm feeling pain. But it was worth it as this very rough part eventually ended up like this and with a slight trimming of the end of the mahogany, the holes on the flange line up with the holes on the block. Even though the drum sanding of the mahogany 
was exactly the same shape as the cast part of the exhaust flange mounting. It did need some very slight trimming. This is just one clip of many that are recorded of the sanding operation. This has been done by hand and it takes a long time. Even initially using 100 grit emery cloth, it takes a while to get the mahogany strips smooth. During this job, I lost the will to live on several occasions. The only good thing about it was, the motion of the sanding job loosened some of the cyanoacrylate adhesive that was stuck all over my fingers on my right hand. This is the final clip of the episode and it shows the progress so far. Although I feel that I must mention that this is not the end product. There's still a lot of rubbing down still to do. I need to work my way down the grades of sandpaper down to 400 grit wet to dry. But that is it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.